direct object pronouns. We're going to talk about uh, these types of pronouns and in order to do so we're going to uh, do it in two different parts. In the first part, which is this lecture right now, we're going to talk about sentence structure because in order to understand direct object pronouns you have to have some background knowledge about sentence structures. Then we're going to talk about the Spanish direct object pronouns and start with some examples. So the basic sentence structure of English and of Spanish is that you have a subject and then you have a verb and then you have an object. You may have heard this a million times in your English classes if you haven't heard it already in Spanish class, which I'm sure you have. And it's actually a lot simpler than people think. Um, for some reason, when, when teachers start saying things like subject, verb, object, students automatically don't want to listen anymore. It's just, oh, no, 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 grammar words, we don't want to listen. But it's simple, because in every sentence you have to have an action. And that's exactly what the verb is. The verb is an act. So if I can lay it out for you here, verbs are an action, and the person doing the action, or the thing doing the action, is the subject. And then the affected party, the person that really didn't really ask to be there, um, or maybe it's a thing that didn't ask to be bought, or didn't ask to be uh, whatever the case might be, is the object. So we've got the doer of the action, the subject, the verb is the action itself, and then the object is the person or thing that's affected by that action. So in this example, we have the boy tripped his brothers, and of course I have it color coordinated, so it makes it really easy, but understand that the action here is tripped. So someone has been tripped. The person doing that action, the culprit here, is the boy, so he is the subject, he is doing the tripping. And the affected party here, the one that didn't necessarily ask to be involved, but he nevertheless is involved, is the poor brother. We're going to assume it's the little brother. And the boy tripped his brother. So there you have it, very simple sentence structure, and this is a very simple sentence. Of course, we have to keep it simple because that's exactly where you are right now in your Spanish instruction. Very simple and concise sentences. So before we learn about object pronouns, let's review the subject pronouns. You learn these in the very, very beginning of Spanish 1. So whatever level you're in, usually in Spanish 1, that's one of the first things you're going to learn. And your subject pronouns, there are 12 total of them, are yo, tú, él, ella, usted, nosotros, nosotras, ellos, ellas, ustedes, and then some teachers will also include vosotros and vosotras, which are used um, in Spain. So if we look at this, right now we don't have a complete sentence. We have subject is left out, but we do have a verb. This is English, where or wheres, depending on whatever the subject might be, and the green shirt. So let's review those subjects first uh, before we move on to objects. There are many things we could plug into this sentence. For example... We could say, the dog wears the green shirt. We can say, our brothers wear the green shirt. Or we can say, the teacher wears the green shirt. I wear the green shirt. You wear the green shirt. There really are a ton of options in this situation. I am now just realizing the dog wears the green shirt. Sounds a little ridiculous, but let's just go with it. Um, so in this case, all of these right here could be doers of the action of wearing. So they are subjects. And... Therefore, if we have them in the subject, we could also probably shorten them. So, example, if we've got the dog wears the green shirt. If we've been talking about the dog for the last 30 minutes and we're talking to people and saying, yeah, the dog does this, the dog does that, it's going to get a little bit repetitive. And instead of saying the dog over and over, we might shorten the dog and say it. I mean, if you prefer personifying the dog, you might say he, but you can shorten it into it or he or whatever you prefer to shorten the words the dog in order not to sound so repetitive. And that right there is a pronoun. So pronouns are the shortened versions of these words. Of course, these last two are already in pronoun form. They're as short as they can possibly get. But that's the idea. So in the English pronouns here, we might say, instead of saying the dog over and over, we might use a subject pronoun it wears the green shirt, or they wear the green shirt, or she or he wears the green shirt, I wear the green shirt, you wear the green shirt, etc. So 
in this case what we've done is maybe we've been using these subjects over and over a little too much so we're going to shorten them and use these beautiful subject pronouns that get the point across everyone already knows what we're talking about so it's okay to instead of saying our brothers say they so quite simply any pronouns that you use in the subject of the sentence are called subject pronouns that should help you understand once we get into the object portion of this any pronouns you put in here so any shortened versions of a noun that you put in here are going to be considered object pronouns now you also learned the Spanish of these and we just went through it so in this case the dog it if we were going to go with it, there is no subject pronoun it in Spanish. It doesn't exist. Uh, for whatever reason, we have to just leave out the pronoun altogether and go straight to the verb and avoid the pronoun because there is no way to do it. Uh, our brothers, though, in saying they, we can say ellos for she and he, ella and él. For I, you can say yo. For you, you can say tú or usted. Now let's talk about the object of the sentence. So in the object of the sentence, we've got right here an open object. My friend likes, and then we can just plug it in with whatever we want to say. So we've got a doer of the action, that's our subject, and our action is likes. And then our object is that affected party. Whatever is being liked did not choose to be liked, it just is liked. Therefore, it is affected, it's not really doing the action of liking. Here are some examples of what might be an object uh, in this sentence. We might say, my friend likes me. That's pretty short already, actually. My friend likes you. My friend likes the car. My friend likes us. My friend likes the books. I mean, again, this sentence could go on forever and ever, or this, this example could go on forever and ever, because whatever you want to put in the object, you really can put in the object, whatever your friend might like. Now, these guys right here that are being affected directly by the um, by the action, by the verb, you can often look at them like this. If I say to you the sentence is, my friend likes me, what does my friend like? Or who does my friend like? Me. If you can answer that question, you've selected the direct object of the sentence. Let's look at maybe with car. If I say to you, my friend likes the car, I can say, what is being liked? So couple possible ways to find the object is to ask yourself, what is being, plug in the action, what is being liked? And then you can find the, um, the object right away. These, again, can be shortened. So just like you can shorten what's in the subject, you can shorten what's in the object. If it's a little too long and you're sounding kind of repetitive, you can use a pronoun instead of the full noun that you might already have. In the case of me and you and us, I mean, that's as short as it can get, so we already have them in the pronoun form. But if I want to say my friend likes the car, and we've been talking about this car over and over and over, you might just want to say my friend likes it. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're using a direct object pronoun, D-O-P, uh, to replace the car. So anytime that you've got a noun in the object of the sentence and you want to replace it and make it shorter by using a pronoun, those are called direct object pronouns and there are certain ones you can use only in that category. So for example, you might not ever replace, uh, let's look at the, the books. Them is a direct object pronoun. If it were in the subject of the sentence, we would say they. If you mix up those two, you're going to make a mistake and say, my friend likes they. That doesn't make sense in English, and it won't make sense in Spanish. So there are certain ones you use here, and there are certain ones you use here. But they definitely do not cross. This chart represents all of the direct objects in English, the pronoun forms of them at least, and all of the ones in Spanish as well. So giving you an example, and what I'm going to do here, as you look at this chart and watch me not so magically erase what I've done with these circles, I'd like to add uh, an example for you. So if I go to add an example here, let's just say the boy since we had that in the beginning, the boy sees dot, dot, dot. So we've got uh, here an action. So our action is sees. 
And then the boy is doing the action, so he's the subject of the sentence. Now, we're going to add an object here, and what we're going to do, instead of adding any object, we're going to add it in pronoun already shortened form, assuming people already know what we're talking about. So you can say, the boy sees me, in which case in Spanish you would choose me. If the boy sees you, and you're talking to someone that you would address by first name, they are your friend, it's a familiar or informal situation, you use te. If instead you say the boy sees you, Miss Dandrea, and Miss Dandrea being me is someone you address by last name because I'm a teacher, then that would be a formal situation. And because I'm a girl, you use la, the feminine form. The boy sees you, and we would use la. If the boy sees him, whoever it is that you're talking about, assuming that our listener already knows who him is, then the boy sees him, you're going to use lo. The boy sees her, you're going to use la. The boy sees it, whatever it is, you're going to use lo or la. Whichever one you choose is going to depend on whether what you're replacing is masculine or feminine. So if, for example, you say el lapis, lapis meaning pencil, el lapis is masculine, so your direct object pronoun that you're going to choose is lo for the masculine. However, if it's la mesa, the table, that's feminine, so you're going to use la. If you're saying the boy sees us, that's simply nos. I didn't include vosotros, I don't traditionally teach it, but if you do learn vosotros in your classes, then it's, for vosotros, it's os. Now, vosotros is simply simply like y'all or you guys, the you plural. Um, and also you can use for you plural los or las if you're in a more formal situation. So the boy sees you guys or y'all or you plural. The boy sees them. If it's a group of all boys or boys mixed with girls, you would say los. If it's a group of all girls or all feminine items, you say las. That's the idea here. Here's the chart cleared out completely so that you can have it and pause it um, for a moment so that you can write down the notes for it and have it in your records. That way the examples that are coming up will make a little more sense. So please pause this video and write down the English and Spanish equivalents of the direct object pronoun so that the following examples can make some more sense. So to get a little bit of practice, we can look at llevo la blusa, which means I wear the blouse. That's our first example there. If I wanted to say I wear the blouse, what is being worn? The blouse. The blouse didn't decide to be worn, therefore it is the object of the sentence. And if we wanted to replace it, we would say I wear it. And the equivalent of that would be la because la blusa is feminine. If I say in this example, the second one, tú compras unos jeans, for example. So in this case, if you buy, we're saying you buy some jeans, you can shorten it and say you buy them. And by shortening it to you buy them, we can pick the them form of, of the direct object pronouns, which is los or las, and we specifically pick los because unos jeans is masculine. If we look at the third example, nosotras preferimos las camisetas, here we're saying we prefer the t-shirts. Instead, we want to say, let's say we've been talking about these t-shirts so many times, we're just going to say we prefer them. And the them that you're going to choose is las because las camisetas is feminine. Now this is a little bit different, it's different vocabulary, and I've also created more uh, complex sentences. So for this first sentence right here, tienes que traer, that construction is you have to, so the verb to have, tener, you have to bring your passport. So what has to be brought? the passport. And because the passport has to be brought, it is the direct object of the sentence, and you can replace it. Instead of saying, you have to bring the passport, and then the passport this, the passport that, we've talked about the passport over and over, let's just get rid of it and say, you have to bring it, if your audience already knows what you're talking about. And of course, we pick lo, because between lo and la, of the two choices, lo is the only one that is masculine. In this second sentence, now this right here is a little bit different from English. Uh, there is not such an expression in English. Hay que. Hay que means one must 
or it must be done. It's very general. It doesn't talk about anybody in particular. It's just one must do it. So, hay que hacer la maleta. One must pack his, her bag or his, her uh, suitcase. So, one must pack their suitcase. So, if we were to find the object of the sentence, we would say, what must be packed? What must one pack? And that would be the suitcase, which is why I underlined la maleta. And we can replace it with la. Because la, instead of saying one must pack the suitcase, we can say one must pack it. And the it that we have to choose is the feminine form for maleta. In the last example, voy a tomar un taxi. This says, I'm going to take a taxi. I am going to take a taxi. So what I'm doing here now is figuring out what am I going to take? What is going to be taken? And that's a taxi. Therefore, that's our direct object of the sentence, and we can replace it. Instead of saying, uh, I'm going to take a taxi, we can say, I'm going to take it, given that everybody that you're talking to already knows what you're talking about. They know you're talking about a taxi, so you can just say it, and you're going to use the masculine because un taxi is masculine. And that concludes for now part one of the direct object pronouns. You should do some practicing before moving on to part two.